Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and sorry it took me so long to record a new video. There's just so much going on in my life currently that there just was no time really to record something. And also currently I'm doing a lot of uh, client work that I really can't show in front of a camera. But some other stuff also happened. I did a lot of talks and interviews. Some are in German, some are in English. Maybe you want to watch uh, one of these. There was for example an interview by She Likes Tech, that's a German German podcast about women in tech, super awesome. So if you speak German, uh, I will add the link below the video. So tune into that one. And I also was at Hexter Cafe uh, from Hexter.io. Pretty sure you know that web video series. So uh, watch the episode about me and the Pico Planets. Also was a super nice talk about 40 minutes long or something. So yeah, have fun watching these other videos. And what I want to show you today is the redesign of my website. So. I'm <laughs> I'm fiddling with my website for basically forever. Like that's my that's my big playground where I experiment and try out stuff and also and you know like people will google you and they will uh, at, join your website and check it out. So it has to be a nice uh, a nice a nice presentation of what you do and also what you what you like and what you don't like maybe and I'm always torn between uh, I like the very scribbly look maybe you've seen my daily drawings that I do and that I post on Twitter so I like I like a, a scribbly playful look uh, and on the other hand I also like very minimalistic very clear websites so I'm always torn between these two styles basically so the first thing I tried is <laughs> I added a canvas, a HTML5 canvas to the website where I can draw stuff with Paper.js. You know, that's a JavaScript framework that I really like to use for generative art. And at first that seemed like a crazy cool idea. So because I could just uh, grab the position of, you know, divs or texts and draw on top of that and make it fun and playful. Uh, but it turns out that was a really dumb idea. When the website gets quite long, like on a blog post or on a, like a project description, you get a huge canvas, like huge. Turns out it sort of works on, on good PCs, doesn't work on weak PCs, doesn't work at all on mobile because uh, <laughs> mobile Chrome just <laughs> basically crashes. So I had to yeah, I had to dump that idea. Next thing I tried was with Paper.js, it's a library for vector graphics. So I could just create SVGs, vector graphics, and add that to the website DOM um, as an SVG element. And that turns out works really nice. And if you like scroll through my website, you can now see I'm drawing uh, a lot of arrows and some, some wiggly lines behind my scribbles. And as it turns out, it's so super easy to make SVG animations with CSS. At first I thought, yeah, maybe I need to have a crazy... planes. <laughs> Where did I stop? But as it turns out, it's so easy with CSS to make nice SVG animations. That was actually quite new to me that you can manipulate SVG so nicely with CSS, that's so cool. And I want to show you today a nice trick on how I generate my arrows and how I make a quick animation. And I think there's a lot more planes going over my head, but I will just ignore them. So first, um, generating the arrows, that's quite easy. You search for two points where you want to put your arrow, like the start point and the end point of your arrow. And then you can draw an arc between these points. And because it's busier curves, you can play a bit with these handles. So the curve will be a bit more flat or a bit more rounded. So you have a nice variation in that point. So then uh, you need the tip of the arrow. And that's also uh, super easy actually, because you can just walk back on your curve like uh, 10, 10 units or something and take the normal vectors there. So you have your curve and you have your normal vectors, not quite, but sort of at the end of your curve. And then you can extend that normal vector and you get two more points. And these are basically the points of your arrow tip. So you can just draw a straight rectangle uh, through these curves, uh, not rectangle, so triangle, <laughs> and you get your arrow tip. And that's Basically, how you create super quick an arrow. Now, when you have your arrow, you want to animate it, that it looks like you are drawing that piece by piece. There are two attributes 
in uh, vector graphics that you can utilize in this case. And the first one is the dash array. This is usually used if you want to have a dashed um, style on your line and you can define how long the visible part of the dash is and how long the distance is to the next dash, little dash stroke. The trick is you want to set both of these values, like the length of the dash and the gap, to be the length of your overall stroke that you want to animate. And then you can use the offset value. That's the value that describes um, where your first uh, dash stroke starts. So it offsets basically where they'll start and where the gaps will be. And you can also set that offset value to the length of your stroke or to zero and tween between those values. And then the dash will move along your path and it will look like uh, you drew a stroke. And I use that a lot actually. I use that on my website for the arrows or for the scribble background strokes. And I also used it for example on my last video about the angry finger generator where you can see the animations, how the finger work. Um, that's the same technique. So I also told you that I wanted to have like a playful element on my website. So I decided to have a very interactive thingy that goes on in the background. And what I did is I uh, use Socket.io um, to connect all, basically, every visitor on the website with each other to, like, maybe not, not a deep connection, but I wanted to share their clicks. So um, when a visitor on the website clicks somewhere, that coordinate is sent to everyone who's also on the website and a generative algorithm in the background will draw a very fancy curvy line to that point. So it will look a bit different for everyone, but everyone shares the clicks. So and that's, that was really fun uh, when I posted the first link on Twitter and people like started to play with each other and it's such a very indirect communication when you know like there's another person clicking and I will click there and you can't, you can't talk, you can't do anything, you can just click and it's still like little games emerge where people like will ping pong uh, positions back and forth and stuff and will find fancy stuff if you click a lot on the same spot the curly curve will do some, some crazy swirls um, so we had quite fun with that and uh, feel free to try that out and because it was so much fun I also made like a blank website where there's no content from my website just that playful background thingy. I will also link that on the video, so have fun going there. I don't have too many visitors on my website, so please don't be disappointed when nothing's happen, but you can also uh, try it out with different devices and see how it works. That's really, that's really cool and fun. And the swirls, actually, uh, I wrote them for an upcoming exhibition, and I think I will talk about that a lot in the next video when the exhibition is open, um, but it was so, so nice to play with. Uh, that I thought it would make gra a great background for my for my website. And I also mentioned my Twitter bot before. Uh, that's a little script that just posts my daily drawings to Twitter. When I basically when I draw it, or a few minutes after I draw it, upload it to the website. And uh, the old version had hand drawn random backgrounds. They were nice and cute, but I don't think they they still fit very well to my website style. So I thought I can just also use that swirls and make these the new backgrounds for my schnipsels. And well, I think they, they look cool and they are now very generative because they are also depend on the last clicks that happen on the website. So each new uh, picture will have a different, a new different swirly background. And I really like that. I think, I think the background color could be a bit more lighter. The contrast is not perfect yet. Maybe I will tweak a bit on that, but I'm really happy how that turned out and how the generative swirls are are super fun to use. Another problem I had to tackle with the website are um, redundant data that I, that I had on my last version because for each project that I create an article for I also uh, somewhere in that article I mention in which exhibitions this has been published or if there were newspaper articles about this thing and stuff and I also have that big about website where I just have the super long list for every stuff that I did that was mentioned somewhere in the media or on, on nice articles in the, on the web or something. And that was a bit redundant on my last website version because I basically I had man manually added this information to both sides and so you need to keep that consistent and that did not really work out really well. And when I was searching for a new framework for uh, to use for my website, 
I stumbled upon Eleventy, which is a really neat little static site generator that can handle data, data types or data files extremely well. So now currently I just have like some JSON files with all the information and I can populate the single projects with that information. I have a, a single yeah, a single point where I hold my data and it's also super helpful for my daily drawings because before I sort of had to manually add an image to the site or at least uh, like the old website were PHP scripts <laughs> basically so it generated on the fly a website but it took quite long to load, it was not that nice and now I can just build the site and it will automatically grab all the images and build the single year sites of my, of my drawings that works great. I can highly recommend that uh, framework 11T, it is called. Really nice, works, works like a charm. It's based on Node, uh, which I'm also very comfortable with, and I can integrate this also nicely with all my paper.js stuff that is also happening on my server. All right, so it's June, which means it's time to make some goodies for my Patreons. And I'm currently plotting little cards of my angry fingers and cutting a lot of uh, cutting a lot more stickers out to send them out and I think they will go out in the next next one or two weeks to all the patrons who are in the goodie tier so I hope you will like your little goodies that you will receive in the near future and that's basically everything oh no there's one thing I wanted to show you the angry fingers they made it into the local newspaper uh, I linked this on in a Twitter thread. Yeah, I will just link it below the video. It was super nice to see that at least the no local newspapers found this interesting. And yeah, I'm still having a lot of fun with that project. You can also now type in text on the website if you want. I did a little addition. So now that my neighbor decided to mow his lawn, I guess it's time to finish up. See you next time. Bye. Never, never record videos on the outside. Super, super dumb idea.